Hey y'all, it's Sarah. Um, yesterday I saw the Harry Potter movie, The Deathly Hallows. Love the movie. That was a great movie. Um, wish they just squeezed it all together. I don't care if it would took ten hours to do. I probably would have sat there and watched it. Um, cause now I'm excited for the second part, and we have to wait until July. Yay. <laughs> Um, the part that was, like, my favorite part, it's with Dobie. I love Dobie. And, um, oh, I thought that Rupert did a good job. I mean, everybody did a phenomenal job playing their parts, you know. You've been doing it for the last ten years. You're going to obviously be able to do this part in the sleep, in your sleep, in this sleep. Um, um, um. I don't know what to say. Oh, like, I just realized watching the movie that um, the lady who plays, um, oh, I just had her name earlier. The one who's in the pink. She plays in this other movie with Rupert um, Grint. And, like, I really like that movie. And I like her in that movie more than I did in the other one. I mean, I like the versatility that she could be, like, this evil person in one movie, and then, like, this really nice person, even though she was sort of kind of evil in that one, but she wasn't, like, evil, like, destroy the world evil. She was just, like, evil, want to get my way kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but I really liked it, and it got slow, because I was reading a, a review before we left, or before I left to go watch it. There's this review on it, and they said that it gets slow towards the middle, and it, it, it did exactly what happened. It got slow, but it's the same kind of slowness that it was in the book. It's when they're traveling, and they're running place to place trying to hide and everything like that. You just want to shoot yourself in the head a little bit, because you're like, hurry up, get to the next part to sort of kind of kick off back into the action because they're sort of kind of not really having action they're, they're just having more of a, like a drama part like oh I can't believe you I'm tired of this blah 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 I'm leaving and like no don't leave don't leave brother and you're just like okay he leaves we know he leaves but it's like Rupert Grant because he he's such a brooding character anyways Ron is that it's like he's always brooding about something but like it was just much darker that he's like I've had it kind of thing that it's like I really am going to leave this time I'm not going to tag along even though he ends up coming back and we all know that um it was fun starting in the middle of the day I'm, I'm cheap I don't want to spend ten dollars on a movie ticket so I go spend the seven dollars on a movie ticket and matinee there's not 40 million people in there um not and I'm sorry people who dress up and stuff start kind of scare me because just in my old hometown when they dressed up for movies and stuff just a little bit out there and that's not my forte I mean I love movies just as much as the crazy dressed up fans and the fans who sit there and try to go to every movie or every event that's got them actors or band members or anybody like that, anybody obsessed with something, it just sort of kind of freaks me out. Um, I mean, I like them. Um, I'll read any information I can on my favorite people on anything, but I won't sit there and like, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. It scares me. But there was only like maybe 15 people in the whole theater. And it was really nice. Um, I was sort of kind of mad at the end of the movie, at the like after the credits and everything. You know, sometimes they put in the cr or like a little sneak preview kind of thing, or some little funny bit at the end of a movie or whatever, um, or something that would connect to the to the next movie. Really wish they did it there, like something that um, gave you a little sneak peek of what's going on in the second part of the Deathly Hollows. I really, really wish they did that. Um, oh, and then I called my mom to tell her, like, it was a good movie and everything like that, and she tells me, oh my gosh, I was so mad that she, oh, oh, I'm so mad, she told me that she, um, Miss Jennifer was talking about, one of the ladies she works with, was talking about how she, um, how, like, how I went to go see the movie, or she was talking about the movie, and my mom mentioned that I went to go see it, and then she's like, oh, I think his name is Terry, I hope I got that right, if not, I'm sorry, one of my mom's other co-workers, he won tickets, 
at on the radio to go to the midnight showing. And I'm like, what? You couldn't tell them about this sooner than I got to. I was going. I could have taken the tickets because he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't gonna go, or he couldn't go, or something like that. So I'm like, oh. oh. And so I, I was mad because <laughs> that would have been awesome. I wouldn't. One, I wouldn't have to spend my money. Two, I could have gotten to the midnight showing because I sort of kind of did want to go to the midnight showing because you know you you're there for the first showing, and I like to be the first for things like that kind of thing, especially when it's like the end of something, I mean, I didn't catch on to Twilight as fast, and I didn't catch on to Harry Potter as fast, but it's like, I was there when Breaking Dawn came out for Twilight, and then at the books, book opening and everything, or whatever, buying me, I was at the little party at the bookstore that I used to go to, and then the same thing for the Deathly Hollows. that was my first Harry Potter book I bought, and it's like pretty much the only Harry Potter thing I have, um, like I said, I got hooked to it really late, but I got hooked to Twilight, soon enough that I wasn't like really late because there was like actually a lot of people after me realizing this is a huge thing that we should be interested in it kind of thing or catching on mainstream because after a couple of my friends read it they're like oh Siri you should read this it's interesting and I was like oh vampires are dumb and then I read it <laughs> and I read Twilight and I was like I have to read everything about this Stephanie Meyer is my new favorite 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 author but um like it's it's harry potter good ending um if you read the books you know pretty much what's going to happen after you see the ending of the movie um like jk rowling's wonderful author um i i appreciate what she's done, so kind of sharing a bit of her life with everybody, because, like, if you watch the special features, like I do, like, I'm a special feature addictee, I love watching all the extra little bits and everything like that, that you get to see a documentary at the end of the sixth movie, um, there's a documentary in the, um, Harry Potter Half-Blood Prince one, um, talking about, like, the story and everything like that, and, um, her life and stuff, and it's sort of kind of like, you get it, it's really tied together, like, She's technically Harry Potter, pretty much. I mean, she's not saying she's Harry Potter and, like, that she went through these experiences, but sort of kind of, like, metaphorically, she was Harry Potter. Um, Went through a struggle, but came out good in the end. Um, So it's, like, it's sort of kind of sad, but, like, we're going to miss you, bye. Um, I mean, it's not like you're going to drop off the face of Earth or anything like that, but I hope there's other works coming out by you that we could find and get hooked on to. I mean, ten years, let's have my life. Literally, all the actors and, like, the characters is my age. Like, literally, Harry Potter is technically 20 right now, just like I am. And it's, like, it's sort of kind of cool that, you know, it took me a long time to connect to the book because my mom was like, oh, witchcraft bad. And so I never really, I thought it was bad, but it's just a book. And so, but it's just, it's really cool that you sat there and when he turned 11, you were turning 11. When he turned 15. Oh, look, you're 15. And, like, the, he was sort of kind of, you know, dealing with all the witch stuff and the fighting of Baltimore and everything like that. That is, like, he was still going through that same teenage problem as anyone else at that age. And um, so I'm looking forward to ending. Um, 10 years is 10 years. That's a really long time. Like, it's, it's about time for it to end. I mean... I had an argument with somebody on YouTube once because I was, we were like, yeah, this is not for the end, and this dude was like, no, Harry Potter lives on forever, and I'm like, I love Harry Potter just as much as the next person, but when it's time to end something good, to keep it on a good note, it's time to end something on a good note, because this dude's like, I hope Harry Potter keeps going on forever, forever, and ever, and ever, they need to keep making movies and write more books, and it's like, she could have probably, if she wanted to, wrote, like, three more books, easy, Okay, not three, more like two. A little bit more sort of kind of breaking up book seven, putting it more in detail of the first half of the book and as book seven and then doing book eight as like the last half of book seven, doing it a little bit more detail there also. And then another book on how how they're transitioning into adulthood, like being adults, adults after defeating Baltimore and everything. Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. I thought I said it Baltimore. I said Baltimore, okay. That is like she could have gotten two books just easy. And but it's like she ended it the way she ended it 
to sort of kind of say that they defeated him. It's a happy ending. Everybody's like, yay, and they live their lives, and you have the prelude, or not prelude, the um, epilogue, and then, you know, all that stuff. And, I mean, she can honestly do stories about the about the people in the epilogue, the children and stuff. She could do stories about that, but it's like you have to literally come up with a whole new bad guy that just pops out in the middle of nowhere when you literally just defeated Satan himself, for sort of. Um, I'm talking really, really long. <laughs> Um, it's 11.16, well, it's not too late, but I'm getting tired, all I wanted to say was, love it, I would give it a four stars, not five, I'm sorry, because book three is my favorite, book three is absolutely my favorite, and movie three is my favorite, The Prisoner of Azkaban, like, it was the closest to the book, they're both very close, or at least that's how I believe it, that they're both very not accurate, but like the closest out of all the movies so far. I mean, book seven or movie seven is pretty long, and so it's giving you actual more details than most of the other movies, also. So I would give it a good second. Good second. Um, but four stars. And um, good night and good luck. Bye.